You see, when we talk about quantum reality, we're talking about the realm where possibilities are infinite. It's a place where energy and matter are intertwined, where your thoughts and emotions shape the very fabric of your existence. Now let's break it down. When you speak what you want into reality, it's not just about words, it's about the energy behind those words. Every thought you think sends out an electrical charge into the quantum field, and every emotion you feel acts like a magnetic charge, drawing back corresponding events and circumstances into your life. Imagine your mind as a powerful transmitter and receiver. When you articulate a clear intention with elevated emotions, like love, gratitude, or joy, you create a coherent electromagnetic signature. This signature has the potential to influence every atom in your reality. Let me give you an example. When you consistently speak and visualize your desires, you're not just daydreaming, you're aligning your inner world with the outer world you wish to create. This process isn't instant. It takes practice and dedication. In my own journey, I've experienced profound shifts when I learned to sustain elevated emotions. It's like dropping a pebble in water. The ripple effect is real. The more you sustain that elevated state, the more you amplify your intentions and broadcast them into the quantum field. When you engage in certain practices, something really interesting happens in your brain. Neurologically speaking, your brain enters states of coherence. This means that alpha and theta brain waves become more prominent. These brainwave patterns are like the rhythms or frequencies that your brain operates on. Alpha brain waves are associated with a state of relaxed wakefulness. It's like when you're awake but in a calm and peaceful state, similar to when you're daydreaming or just before falling asleep. This state is important because it allows your mind to rest while still being alert. It's also the state where creativity often blossoms. Have you ever had a great idea or solution to a problem pop into your head while you were relaxed or daydreaming? That's your alpha brain waves at work. Theta brain waves, on the other hand, are even slower and are associated with deep relaxation, meditation, and sometimes even mystical experiences. It's like when you're in a dreamlike state where your mind feels deeply relaxed and open. In this state, people often report feeling more connected to their intuition, creativity, and spiritual insights. So when your brain enters states of coherence with alpha and theta brain waves dominating, it's like tuning into a frequency that enhances relaxation, creativity, and even opens the door to mystical or profound experiences. It's as if your brain waves are synchronized and working together in harmony, creating a conducive environment for profound insights and transformations. Scientifically, these states of coherence are not just random occurrences. They are deeply linked to the physiological and biochemical processes in your brain and body. For example, when you're in these states, your brain releases different neurotransmitters and chemicals that support relaxation and heightened awareness. Imagine your brain as a symphony orchestra where each section plays its part to create a beautiful piece of music. When your brain waves are in coherence, it's like all sections of the orchestra are playing in perfect harmony. This harmony allows for clear thinking, creativity, and a sense of deep relaxation that can be profoundly rejuvenating. People who regularly practice meditation or mindfulness often experience these states of coherence more frequently. They learn to quiet their minds, focus their attention, and enter these relaxed yet alert states more readily. It's like training a muscle. The more you practice, the stronger and more accessible these states become. Now let's talk about the practical benefits of cultivating these brainwave patterns. When you're in a state of alpha and theta coherence, your body experiences a cascade of positive effects. For instance, your stress levels decrease, which can have a positive impact on your overall health and well-being. Chronic stress 
is known to contribute to a variety of health problems. So reducing it through practices that induce alpha and theta brain waves can be beneficial. Moreover, these states promote mental clarity and focus. Have you ever noticed how clear your mind feels after a good night's sleep or a refreshing nap? That's because sleep naturally induces alpha and theta brain waves, allowing your brain to process information and consolidate memories effectively. In these states, your body undergoes a biochemical transformation. Melatonin, typically known for regulating sleep, converts into powerful antioxidants and other beneficial chemicals. This shift supports not only your physical health, but also enhances your mental clarity and spiritual awareness. Now let's dive deeper into a key aspect of personal growth, managing your energy effectively. It's crucial to understand how your attention directs your energy flow. Imagine your energy as a precious resource. Where you place your attention decides where this resource goes. This concept is fundamental because it directly impacts how you experience life. Consider this. If you find yourself dwelling on past grievances, replaying old hurts or mistakes in your mind, you're essentially sending your energy into a time that no longer exists. This drains your vitality and keeps you stuck in negative emotions. Similarly, if you're constantly worrying about the future, what might happen, what could go wrong, you're diverting your energy away from the present moment. This creates anxiety and robs you of the ability to fully engage with what's happening right now. The present moment is where life unfolds. It's the only moment that truly exists. When you're fully present, you're able to experience life in its richness and entirety. You notice the beauty around you, connect deeply with others, and respond to challenges with clarity and calmness. This is why learning to manage your energy by focusing on the present moment is so powerful. Think of it like this. Your attention acts like a spotlight. Whatever you shine it on becomes illuminated and magnified in your experience. If you shine it on the past or future, you miss out on what's happening right in front of you. It's like trying to drive a car while constantly looking in the rearview mirror or staring at the road miles ahead. You'll likely miss the turns and obstacles in your immediate path. Managing your energy effectively means cultivating awareness of where your attention is directed. It's about noticing when your mind starts to wander into the past or future and gently guiding it back to the present moment. This practice requires mindfulness, being aware of your thoughts, emotions, and sensations without judgment. One effective way to anchor yourself in the present moment is through mindfulness meditation. This practice involves focusing your attention on the sensations of your breath, observing thoughts as they arise without getting caught up in them, and returning your focus to the present whenever your mind drifts away. Another helpful technique is gratitude. When you express gratitude for the present moment, acknowledging the good things happening right now, you shift your energy towards positivity and abundance. This simple practice not only enhances your mood, but also reinforces your connection to the present. It's important to acknowledge that managing your energy isn't about ignoring the past or neglecting future planning. Reflecting on the past can provide valuable lessons, and preparing for the future is essential for setting goals and making informed decisions. However, dwelling excessively on the past or worrying excessively about the future drains your energy and diminishes your ability to act effectively in the present. Moreover, when you're fully present, you're more attuned to your intuition and inner wisdom. Have you ever had a gut feeling or a hunch about something that turned out to be right? That's your intuitive guidance system at work. When you quiet the mental chatter and tune into the present moment, you create space for these insights to emerge. Practicing presence also strengthens your relationships. When you're fully engaged with someone, listening attentively 
empathizing with their feelings and responding authentically, you deepen your connection. People appreciate being heard and understood, and this fosters trust and mutual respect. To create a new reality, you must anchor yourself in the present. This is where your power lies. By cultivating mindfulness and practicing meditation, you strengthen your ability to shape your destiny consciously. Gratitude is like a magic key that opens the door to a more abundant and fulfilling life. When you take a moment to express gratitude, you're doing much more than just saying thank you. You're actively shifting your mindset and energy towards positivity and abundance. Imagine your mind and emotions as a radio station broadcasting signals into the universe. When you're stuck in a mindset of scarcity, focusing on what you lack or what's going wrong, you're essentially tuning your station to a low frequency channel. This low frequency signal attracts more of the same into your life. It's like a cycle where negativity begets more negativity. Now let's flip that script. Gratitude acts as a powerful tool to change the channel. When you consciously practice gratitude, you're elevating your vibrational frequency. In simple terms, you're sending out positive vibes that resonate at a higher level in the universe's frequency spectrum. Think of it this way. Expressing gratitude is like turning up the dial on your radio station to a higher frequency. You start broadcasting positivity, appreciation, and abundance. And just like tuning into a different radio station, this higher frequency attracts more positive experiences people and opportunities into your life. Scientifically speaking, gratitude has a profound impact on your brain and body. When you feel thankful, your brain releases feel-good neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. These chemicals not only make you feel happier in the moment, but also contribute to your overall sense of well-being and satisfaction with life. Moreover, gratitude shifts your focus from what's lacking in your life to what's already present and positive. It cultivates a mindset of abundance where you begin to notice and appreciate the blessings, big and small, that surround you every day. This shift in perspective can be transformative. Imagine waking up each day with a sense of gratitude for the simple joys, a warm cup of coffee, the sunrise, a kind word from a friend, by acknowledging and appreciating these moments, you're training your brain to seek out more reasons to be grateful. It's like planting seeds of positivity that grow into a garden of abundance. Practicing gratitude doesn't require grand gestures or monumental achievements. It starts with small, daily actions. You can keep a gratitude journal where you write down three things you're grateful for each day. This simple practice helps to anchor your mind in positivity and trains your brain to scan the environment for reasons to be thankful. I often encourage my students to engage in daily rituals that support this mindset, whether it's morning meditation, visualization exercises, or gratitude journaling. These practices reinforce your intentions and keep you aligned with your goals. Transformation goes beyond simply achieving external success. It's a profound journey of becoming the best version of yourself. It involves rewiring your brain and body to embody the qualities and experiences you deeply desire. When we talk about transformation, we're talking about more than just reaching goals or accomplishing tasks. It's about a fundamental shift in how you think, feel, and act in the world. Imagine yourself like a caterpillar transforming into a butterfly. It's a complete metamorphosis where you emerge with new strengths, insights, and capacities. At the heart of transformation is the idea of growth and evolution. It's a process where you consciously choose to let go of old patterns and limitations that no longer serve you. This can be challenging because it often requires stepping outside of your comfort zone and facing fears or uncertainties. However, it's through these challenges that you expand your potential and discover new possibilities. 
one of the key aspects of transformation is rewiring your brain. Our brains are incredibly adaptable and they have the capacity to change throughout our lives. This concept is known as neuroplasticity. By consistently practicing new ways of thinking and behaving, you can create new neural pathways in your brain. These pathways support the development of positive habits, perspectives, and behaviors that align with your goals and aspirations. For example, if you've always struggled with self-confidence, you can actively work on rewiring your brain to cultivate self-assurance and belief in your abilities. This might involve challenging negative self-talk, practicing affirmations, and taking actions that build your confidence over time. As you reinforce these positive patterns, they become more automatic, making it easier for you to embody the qualities of self-assurance and resilience. Transformation also involves rewiring your body. Our bodies are interconnected with our minds, emotions, and energetic systems. When you engage in practices like mindfulness, meditation, yoga, or physical exercise, you're not only strengthening your body, but also creating coherence between your physical and mental states. For instance, regular exercise not only improves physical fitness, but also boosts mood, reduces stress, and enhances cognitive function. These benefits contribute to an overall sense of well-being and vitality, supporting your journey of personal transformation. Moreover, transformation is about aligning your inner self with your outer experiences. It's about living authentically and in alignment with your values, passions, and purpose. When your inner beliefs and aspirations are in harmony with your actions and choices, you experience greater fulfillment and satisfaction in life. As you embark on your transformational journey, it's important to cultivate self-awareness and mindfulness. Pay attention to your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors without judgment. Notice what triggers negative patterns or limiting beliefs and consciously choose to respond in ways that support your growth and evolution. When you speak what you want into reality, you're not just speaking to the universe, you're speaking to yourself. You're affirming your potential and reprogramming your subconscious mind to support your highest aspirations. So this journey is about more than manifesting material possessions. It's about creating a life filled with joy, fulfillment, and meaningful connections. It's about aligning your inner truth with your outer reality. Now, if you trust that you can go a little further, then all of those thoughts are just thoughts in your head that you have to create coherence around. So if you stopped and you said, I am going to master this moment, forget about going anywhere, doing anything, following instructions. I'm just going to walk, work with my body to get it back into the present moment and continue to unfold back into possibility. Here's my question. If you turn that battleship around even slightly by executing a will that's great than that program and you are in hot pursuit of your own freedom and your brain and your personality is beating you up I've had those moments and you know what it's David and Goliath it has always seemed bigger than me because I've given it so much of my attention and so much of my energy it is bigger than me but when I no longer pay attention to it just like not giving my power to it now I can settle myself back into the present moment and it's just the thought and I examine that thought, I look at it, and I become very familiar and conscious of it. And then my brain will say, well, what about this? You did this wrong. It's too late. You know, give up. And then I address that thought. Now, here's my question. 45 minutes of doing battle with your personality and continuously choosing love and unfolding deeper into it. If you make the effort to disinvest your attention and energy out of Goliath, and pull energy back to you. But the next meditation that you have could be the easiest meditation for you to connect. Is it possible? So then that then had to come up for you in order for you to evolve through it. Yes or no? And your body is just saying, look, I'd rather be worrying about my taxes than connect to the divine. Yes or no? 
There's a book that was one of my favorite books I ever read. It's called The Red Lion. And The Red Lion is a great story of an initiate that, that murders an alchemist and drinks the philosopher's stone drinks, the red lion, the elixir of life that causes immortality. And he wasn't ready to drink this philosopher's stone. He wasn't of the right consciousness. And when he drank it, he never forgot any of his lifetimes. And he saw all his demons. And this book is this journey of this soul through different levels of every single lifetime you can imagine that you and I can relate to. And he runs into a secret society and he becomes initiated. And there's a chapter in the Red Lion called The Kilk Yard. And I asked my children to read that chapter every year. Every year they have to read that chapter because the initiate sits down in front of a statue, an inanimate statue. And his job is to animate that statue and bring it to life. Are you with me? And for years, he wakes up in the morning, makes his tea, has his breakfast, and then all day he's putting his life force and his energy into animating this particular statue. And after years, he notices it swallows. He notices it moving its finger. And the moment he starts to realize that he could take something inanimate and bring it to life, he gives it more of his attention and energy. You with me still? Until it is a walking, talking being. As we begin to create more coherence in the brain, more coherence in the heart, you're creating a very profound laser, a Wi-Fi signal that can allow you to read information. Can't read it if you're separate. You can't read it if your brain's incoherent. You can't read it if your heart's incoherent. And so the more coherence and order you have, the more the experience gets enriched because you can't read that information unless you're ready for it. That's the point. So as people start getting through this and they start having very profound moments and they're now opening their heart and they can sustain heart coherence and they know how to create brain coherence, that's the formula. And now they have a laser. They have coherent light and information that can read information that exists beyond the senses. And the pineal gland, once activated, will transduce it into profound imagery. Whether you see with your eyes open or your eyes closed, it doesn't matter because it's more real than anything you've ever experienced. Let's have a small pause here. It's the next part. Dr. Zhou is going to talk about his research about the four states of matter. Listen carefully, this is very important. And so I started researching and I found that there's four states of matter. There's solids, there's liquids, there's gases, and the biggest, most abundant form of matter, what's called plasma. And plasma is when you have a negative charge and a positive charge, and they haven't formed an atom yet. So if you have a negative charge and a positive charge, then you're going to have an electrical current running between the two and a field around that current. And the universe really, stars connect through plasma. Everything connects through plasma, S. Intention is, you may say, I want a healing. I want a new job. I want a new relationship. Now, the moment you ask the question, the what if question, what would it be like to be in love? What would it be like to have a new job? What would it be like to be in a new relationship, to do whatever, to be healed? The moment you ask that question, the part of your brain called the frontal lobe, which is the crowning achievement of the human being, 40% of your brain is the frontal lobe. It's the workshop, it's the creative center. Frontal lobe has connections to all other parts of your brain. The moment you ask an open-ended question, you speculate a possibility. The creative center turns on and it looks out over the landscape of the entire brain and it begins to call up different networks of neurons that are stored in your brain based on something you've learned intellectually, knowledge, or something you've experienced in your life. Like, well, I know what it is to be in love, or I know what it is to have a good job, or I read a book about it, and it begins to call up these different networks of neurons, and then it seamlessly pieces them together to create a new idea, a new vision. Now listen, your body's gonna go like, well, we gotta get a cup of coffee, and you gotta go, I'm tired, and you gotta go, ah, 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 body, you're not the mind, I'm the mind right now. You're gonna sit here, I'm gonna feed you, you're gonna get your coffee, 
You're going to do all those things, but right now, this is my time. You're going to obey me, right? So now the body's no longer the mind, you're the mind. And so when it wants to get up and you become aware of it, you return back to the present moment. Every time you do, that's a victory. And you're changing some aspect of yourself. So then ask yourself, I do this all the time, write down four thoughts that you're going to stay conscious of the whole day. I can't, it's too hard. You'd be surprised the moment you become conscious of what those thoughts are, how unconscious you've been to them all day, all for weeks on end. Write down what you speak, how you speak, four things you wanna change, how you act, how do you act, do you complain, do you blame, do you make excuses? Do you feel sorry for yourself? That's a victim consciousness. What emotions do you live by? Is it possible that you're so used to living by guilt, you don't even know it's guilt, it just feels like you? Do you allow your energy to drop? Become conscious of those states of mind and body and review them and say, this is the old self. Then say, what thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? And start firing and wiring and start feeling it. What behaviors will I demonstrate today? What choices will I make? One day, one lifetime, just like you did, rehearse them. Rehearse the whole entire thing. Begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain. And if you keep installing it, the hardware is going to become a software program and you're going to start thinking and acting that way. And then here's the tough part. Can you teach your body emotionally what your future is going to feel like before it's made manifest? And don't get up until you feel that way. Now practice that for a few days and then see if you can stay in that state and watch all of a sudden all those weird doors start opening for you. Synchronicities. Synchronicities, whatever they are. Number two, if you stick to your old habits and memories, you'll just keep creating the same future. Your body holds your unconscious mind Many people prefer the comfort of what's familiar rather than risking something new. So, when people say they don't see how their thoughts affect their future, it's because 95% of those thoughts are automatic. You don't even realize you're having them. The first step to change is to start noticing what you're thinking and then changing it. When you begin to observe your thoughts, you're no longer just a part of the program. You are now aware and observing yourself. This shift is crucial. Once you're aware, you need to stay conscious and avoid slipping back into old patterns. It requires a lot of awareness and energy. If you don't raise your energy levels, you'll fall back into old habits. As you become more aware of these automatic thoughts, you'll catch them more often. Research shows you can even start sensing thoughts before they fully form. The key is to regularly experience feelings like gratitude, wholeness, abundance, and freedom. If you do this every day, you'll start to feel like your desired future has already happened rather than waiting for it to arrive. When you're connected to the past, you're always searching for the future. But when you embody the future you want, you change your energy. No one changes until their energy changes, and changing your energy changes your life. You'll start to feel like your future is already here. By maintaining this new mindset and emotional state throughout the day, regardless of external circumstances, you'll start to notice unexpected opportunities and coincidences appearing in your life. When people ask me why I meditate every morning, I say it's because if I can overcome my old self in the morning, the rest of the day is easier. Mastering yourself means mastering your life. During meditation, the default chatter in your brain called the default mode network, shuts off not just during the session, but for the rest of the day. This helps you stay focused and trust yourself more. As you practice creating harmony between your brain and heart, you'll believe in a future you can't yet see or experience. Your brain will start to act as if your goals have already been achieved, making it easier to reach them. Repeatedly visualizing and experiencing this future helps rewire your brain to align with your goals. Eventually, this new way of thinking becomes a habit. You'll start acting happier because you've installed new neural pathways. When you face challenges and push through, you'll become more kind, loving, patient, and present. You'll be mastering time, not stuck in the past or future. 
If you focus all your energy on the present moment, you'll have the power to achieve amazing things. Take time each day to disconnect from your daily routine and invest in yourself. Believing in yourself opens up new possibilities. When you have a strong will and push through challenges, you'll start to feel happier without needing anything external. 